In this series of videos, you will see a number of demonstrations of various antennas and radio wave propagation phenomena. Each video is just a few minutes long and will demonstrate some interesting antenna property or electromagnetic wave property. These will be live demonstrations using actual electromagnetic radiation and can be reproduced at reasonable cost by anyone with a knowledge of electronics. All of the experiments can be performed on a six foot folding table due to the fact that we will be using microwave frequencies. For some demonstrations, an optical analog will be demonstrated or discussed. The radio frequency used for these demonstrations will be 10 gigahertz, the wavelength being about three centimeters or about an inch and an eighth. This is in the microwave spectrum. However, most every property demonstrated holds true for any electromagnetic radiation frequency from short waves to light. We're using such a high frequency because it makes it easy to demonstrate things on a tabletop. The shorter the wavelength, the smaller the antennas can be and the smaller the physical area needs to be for demonstrations. Another reason to use 10 gigahertz, also known as X-band, is that there is a lot of surplus hardware available due to its use for motion sensors and radar. For example, 10 gigahertz sources are available on eBay for just a few dollars. I'll divide the demonstrations up into a couple dozen or so videos, each just a few minutes long. The transmitter and receiver is part of this intro polarization, the ground plane antenna, dipole and Yagi antennas, the corner reflector, loop Yagis, the Amos antenna, circular polarization, optical circular polarization, velocity of propagation, lenses, the diffractive zone plate, the phase zone plate, ducting, standing waves, interferometer, knife edging, Fresnel zone, double slit experiment, NVIS or near vertical incident sky wave, the slot antenna, plotting antenna patterns, and hardware schematics. For the remainder of this video, we'll look at the transmitter and receiver that we'll be using for these demonstrations. The transmitter uses a gun diode to generate 10 or 20 milliwatts of 10 gigahertz. A gun diode is a small semiconductor that when mounted in a suitable cavity and a few volts DC is applied, it generates microwaves. Couldn't be simpler and it's perfectly safe. You can sometimes pick up these gun oscillators on eBay for $20 or so. I mounted mine in a hinged tin box, essentially a small lunch box. Besides the gun source, there are batteries and a three terminal voltage regulator to supply the optimum voltage to the gun diode. The voltage is not critical. I have added a waveguide extension to bring a waveguide flange outside of the box where we will be connecting various antennas. Waveguide is a transmission line commonly used for microwave frequencies as it, it is very low loss. Waveguide for X-band is fairly common on the surplus market and is designated WR90. There are other X-band sources. One of the oldest is this, a Klystron vacuum tube. These were used in the 1950s and 60s for radar receiver local oscillators and by ham radio operators in 10 GHz transceivers. They were also used in a microwave training kit for colleges. A relatively new addition are dielectric resonator oscillators that are the heart of these microwave Doppler motion detectors. These are going for under $3 on eBay. They require 5 volts DC and generate a few milliwatts of 10.5 gigahertz, somewhat lower power than the gun oscillators, but still usable. You'll need to do some slight mods with an X-Acto knife so you can add an SMA connector.
Next, we need a receiver. It doesn't have to be extremely sensitive or sophisticated. We're using a simple detector with a 1N23 diode. This diode has been in use since World War II and detects 10 GHz quite well. The diode is mounted in a short piece of waveguide called a detector mount with a flange for attaching antennas. You can find a surplus commercial waveguide detector mount or you can make your own. Also in a hinged tin box with the detector are some electronics to amplify the diode's output and drive a meter movement to indicate signal strength and a voltage to frequency converter that produces a tone through a speaker for a pitch that indicates signal strength. There is an output connector for connecting other signal indicating devices. Okay, now that we have a transmitter and receiver, it's on to the demonstrations, starting with linear polarization. <laughs> 